Which many people, myself included, would do as the last dungeon in a normal playthrough, but the story of the game seems to tell you to do the Spirit Temple last, so not really going to argue with it. And most people, I think, also do Spirit Last anyway, despite the Medallion Order. So Shadow Temple's over there, but before I go there, there's something I want to do in Lon Lon Ranch, which is right over here. So I'm going to super slide there. Perfect. It's always fun to travel across the field this way. In fact, it's a little bit relevant to what I'm going to do in here. I mean, the only real reason to come here as an adult is to get Epona, the horse, which you can, you know, like, ride around the field and it saves a lot of travel time and all that stuff. Well, the funny thing about Epona is her max speed is, like, the same value as the max speed of a super slide. But it's not constant at all because like she has to recharge, you have to give her carrots and all that crap. So what you're normally supposed to do is you talk to this guy, he lets you ride around on the horses, you play a Pona's song, which I don't have, and then you can race him around this track around the ranch. And if you win, he lets you keep the horse, but he blocks the entrance so you have to jump over one of the fences in this place, like this thing right here. This is good for us because for some reason the loading zone to let you keep Epona is actually just over this fence. It doesn't matter if you do any of that stuff before it. So if I can hover over this fence, I'm gonna get ISG first and get it from Navi. She can interrupt the crouch stab. I'm gonna staircase these hovers, so let me just put my sword away. I'm gonna put the camera like this so we can actually see what's going on. If it would ever cooperate. Thank you. Okay, so if I do a backflip again, I should hopefully go over the fence. Yep, just like that, straight into the loading zone, and just like that, I have Epona without doing any of the stuff, including getting her song. But, as I said earlier, she's not actually that useful. She's honestly pretty slow compared to just like doing super slides everywhere. But I suppose for a casual playthrough, it's always fun to have her. And I am going to play with her a little bit right now. So, let me think. I'm now... no, it's this way, isn't it? I'm gonna go back up and head to Kakariko. I don't have the song, so I can't go up there. She gives it to you once you've beaten the Water Temple. Yeah, that thing is a big pole. If you kill all ten of them in the field, you can get an extra bottle out of it. But with that glitch that I've been doing to accidentally clone bottles, I don't think I'm ever gonna need that. So yeah, like, when you press A to give her a carrot, the small burst of speed that she has there it's the same speed as a super slide, but obviously it runs out. You have to let her recharge and all that crap. But the main reason I got Epona was just to show off that you can get her without doing any of that other stuff. And also because there are some cool glitches that I'm going to show off later which involve her. But in the meantime, I'm going to head back up here and head back to the graveyard. I don't think there's anything to show off in here right now. It's really dark actually, it's a lot darker in here as an adult than it is at night as a kid. It's pretty much true for a lot of Hyrule actually. So I don't really think I need to put the camera around the other way, we all know what Kakariko looks like by now. So I'm just gonna head in here. So graveyard, I could... Well there's a number of ways I can get up to up there, which is where the Shadow Temple is. I need to do the same kind of thing I did before as a kid, so that, you know, the loading zone is bypassed and all that stuff. I don't have to light the candles or whatever. One way, which is going just go away. One way is to do a hover up to here. I'm just gonna kill you. If you do like a bomb hover up here, I don't want to catch it. If you do a bomb hover up here, you can jump on top of that crate up there. You can't hook shot it. If you have the long shot, you can reach it with that, which is how you're supposed to get up, but the hook shot just doesn't reach far enough. If you do a bomb hover up there, then a true damage boost from on top of that box and land on the boundary, you can walk along very carefully. The big problem with it is that you don't have ISG, so it's a little harder. 
I mean, you can probably get it up there with a bomb, but whatever. Another method is to hook shot on top of this ch uh, shed, then just do a small bomb hover onto the boundary. This time you do have ISG because you hovered and you can just walk along, but that's not nearly as fun as the method that I used to get in there as a kid, so I'm just going to do that one again. So let's get ISG. The setup's a little different due to the fact that Adult Link has a bigger backflip than Young Link, but it's actually a lot easier to do. So backflip, side roll, retarget, side top, side top, side roll, retarget. And this is the angle I want to have. So I'm going to break this plant here, but none of the others. I'm just going to walk into the corner, two side tops to the right, and just run back. And I'm going to pull out the hook shot because this gives Adult Link a smaller backflip. So when I backflip here, he's in the right spot. And he's also set up in such a way that if I were to roll, he would automatically roll to the right. So I'm going to pull out a chew, I'm going to press R, I'm going to press A instantly so that he rolls and then I'm going to mash A so that he grabs the plant. Just like that. Super sliding away and the plant that Link tried to grab didn't explode. And because he has no strength upgrades, this is going to happen when I let go of R. Which is just what I want to happen, so now I can backflip onto the boundary. And I can just, as before, carefully make my way over. I do have ISG, so I don't have to be like super careful, but whatever. There are, there are a few places on this that you can get sort of stuck and you have to backflip out of it. And that's always a hassle because you always risk like falling off. But I seem to be doing pretty alright so far, so... Yeah, I think I'm in the clear now, the rest of it's... Never mind. So let's try this again. I'm just going to show the whole setup again, but a little quicker this time. Sword away. Oh, one other thing that I should have pointed out actually, it's important that, like, right after you start super sliding, you let go of Z or Z, and then you press it again so that the plants are on the screen as you super slide away from them, so that they don't unload when you get too far away, because if they unload, then Link will have nothing to like pull them back to. So just be careful with that. So the reason I screwed this up before is because I thought I got stuck, and when I tried to backflip, well, actually no, I think I did get stuck, and when I tried to backflip, I just, the camera got a little wonky, and I just went in a direction that I wasn't expecting to go in, and he fell off, so if you take it nice and slow, that'll probably not happen to you. This trick isn't really that hard. I mean, it's nothing compared to the tricks I had to use to get inside the spirit temple early. So anyway, back up here, I'm just going to get on top of the stairs, just line up, and then just the usual side hop down, bypassing the wooden zone. All the candles are unlit, actually they're not even there, and the door is open so I can just walk right in. So I'm going to save my game just so I don't ever have to do that again. As an adult you can just hook shot over and... The Shadow Temple is probably one of the most broken temples in the game. We're going to skip, I'd say probably 80 to 90% of everything you have to do in here. Probably a little more actually because I already got the hover boots as a kid. I don't have the Lens of Truth thanks to overwriting it with a bottle. So I'm just going to have to hope that I can find the right spot. It's always one of the back three things that you have to point at. So it's either going to be the next one, yeah, this one right here, or the one after, or the one after that. And it's good to have the hover boots on because if you do hit the wrong one, the floor is going to disappear and that's not good for anyone. Okay, I got the right one, so that's good. That saves a little bit of pulling, I guess. So I can just walk right across here. I could do a super flip over, but there's no points. So I have to take the hover boots off. So down here, I'm going to head straight into this room past the invisible wall. And there is a small key to get in this room. I'm going to need one small key for the entire dungeon, so I'm going to get this one, just because it happens to be on my path. 
and I missed that crystal. And I, I really want to be careful here. I don't want to take too much damage because it's really easy to die later on in this dungeon. Okay, I'm gonna have to go back and get that one I missed as well. As long as you shield, he shouldn't be able to hit you anyway. Okay, so the small key's right in there. The idea is that you get a small key and you go back out of this room the same way I came in. And behind the bombable wall is a locked door and you just open it with that key. I'm not going to do that, there's a better place that I can use the key. It's down this invisible part. So in here, as you can see, there's a block which stops me from getting any more. I'm going to take the hover bits off first of all. Now, through here, there's the bolt. Towards the end of the Shadow Temple, you come out of this door. There's like a door over there, you can see it there. And you get on the bolt, you play Zelda's Lullaby, and it takes you to the final part of the dungeon over there. And when you get to that part, you can pull this block out, and it opens like a shortcut from that room up there. Now, fortunately, there's a way to clip through this wall, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay myself, press B to get away from it. First person mode, I'm going to slam the control stick to the right. Just like that. And this angle right here should be exactly what I need, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and jump slash into the seam between the gate part and the wall part. And I'm going to jump slash again as soon as I see the link is inside it. Okay, just like that. Oh, no, he grabbed it. Sometimes he grabs it, and if that happens, you just get pushed back through, but it's no big deal. You can just do it again. It's a really easy trick to skip like 80% of the dungeon. Okay, so now I'm through here. I could go and pull that out just to make a shortcut, but there's no point. You can also pull that out to reach this ladder, but there's no point. Again, we can just hook shot your way up. But even that is pointless when you can just do this. And just get up like that. So, still don't have any ocarina, so I'm gonna have to play my fish again. Well, not play my fish, but play my sword or something using the fish. So I have to have the full bottle in Link's hand. And it's just a matter of backflipping and pressing the two buttons. And I can play Zelda's Lullaby. And this is going to take me to the very end of the dungeon. There's only one other thing that I really need to collect, and that's the boss key. So on the way down there, there's going to be a couple of Stalfos that are going to give me bother, but with Power Crouch stabs, I should be able to get rid of them pretty quick. I do want to be a little careful about my health though, because as I said, there's some dangerous stuff later on. Okay, so there should be another one over here. Maybe he's like on a timer, he doesn't come through. Yeah, okay, he's up there. I've never seen that happen before, but whatever. Okay, so the game actually lags quite a bit when you hit those guys. That seems to be the case wherever you hit them, not just in here. So I'm not going to wait for the ship to sink, I can just jump off right here. I don't think there's ever any hearts in any of these pots, which is really weird because the boss room is right over there. But anyway, first thing I have to do is go get the key for that room. So there's a lot of seemingly open paths that you can take in here, but a lot of these things are actually invisible walls like this. So I'm just gonna walk around. This is the only one I have to go to, the one in here. And this room has the boss key in it, but you're supposed to use Den's fire to get through it, but if you just walk over here and slash your sword, the Redead will catch you and Link will be frozen in place and pulled inside the room. And just like that you can grab the boss key. Unfortunately, you can't easily get out of here, so I'm just going to have to wait for these walls to move together. When they reach the center, the game assumes that Link is inside and it crushes him. So, that should be happening any second. And it puts you back at the start of the room, which is good for me. So, I don't have a lot of health there, which is not a good sign. 
So I'm gonna have to play it a little safe for the rest of this dungeon, I think. Oh my god, I fucking got myself lost. That's not the right door. Well, this is a little embarrassing. I don't think it's this one, but I'm gonna open it just in case. I'm pretty sure this is the one with the skull in it. Yeah, that's like the useless room. There's nothing but a skull in there. So it's gotta be this one. I just ended up going the complete opposite way that I wanted to, that's all. So this should take us back into the room that we were in before. No, it... what? It didn't. Okay, so... I don't know, maybe I, I was heading the right way before? Now I'm wishing that I did have the lens of truth because <laughs> this would not be happening. Okay, this is the right room, so what you're supposed to do over here... You're supposed to take your bow and arrow and shoot one of those bomb flowers. It makes the statue fall down and you've got a bridge to cross with. I don't have that at all, I don't have the bow yet, so I'm just going to do a super slide with the hover boots to reach the other side. It's important to start the super slide without the hover boots on because his acceleration with them is really, really slow. Okay, so now that he's sliding back, I'm just going to put these on, still hold R, and he very easily makes it across. So actually, I'll just keep the hover boots on, because I'm almost at the boss. These pots are probably not going to help me. Yeah, I don't need the magic at all. I could get that heart up there if I like hovered up, I suppose. But otherwise, I think you may need the Scarecrow song or something, which I'm not going to get. So I know where the invisible platforms are. I can just sort of run it where I think they're going to be, and yeah, I should be safe. So this boss is kind of a pain. I just want to jump slash down so that my power crouch stab is stored. So you're supposed to use the Lens of Truth again for this guy. It's supposed to be really useful in this temple, but... It's not really necessary. As long as you know sort of where he is, he, he always appears between the two hands when he's attacking you, so... Yeah, you can see it right there. It's like the red part is what you're supposed to hit. First I need to hit both of the hands, so as soon as the camera turns around I'm going to do that. And just like that I am dead. So back here again, hopefully the fight will go a little better this time. In fact I know for a fact it will because like a complete wimp I went and got not one, but two fairies. Although unfortunately since this one is in a glitched bottle it won't heal me automatically. I'm going to have to manually use that one, but it's no big deal. I can't really do anything until Navi shuts up and my buttons seem to work. Okay. I'm just gonna super slide back across. Of course I can get that glitch first try, but just can't kill the boss. In this room you just have to run forward, then left a little bit, then straight towards the door. It's gonna get my power crouch stab ready. And the cutscene here is a little shorter if I remember correctly, because it's the same kind of thing that happened with Twin Rova where it doesn't show the full thing. It just pushes straight into the fight. Yeah, it's not showing the full thing, it doesn't display his name either. Okay, so I guess I'm just gonna wait for one to attack me. So, uh, I probably could have hit one there as well. Oh well. Well, what is he doing this turn? Okay, so I got the arrow. Ah, that's too old. So, the big thing will be coming at me now. If your slash is there, a frame perfect, you can actually kill it in one cycle, but kind of hard to do. I guess I could have got ISG actually from targeting it or something. I could have totally got the other one there, I wasn't thinking. Okay, so 
this is going a lot better than the last time. This is more like a technical fight, I guess. So I guess one more cycle will do it. I was hoping to finish in two cycles, but I guess that's asking too much. So what's gonna happen? Oh, it doesn't let you fire the stupid thing. He targets the wrong one first all the time. I'm probably gonna use that glitched ball field when I get back up here. Yeah, really so let's get rid of this. Oh my good god. It won't let me out. This is really embarrassing. Right, no one's gonna attack. It doesn't help that the hover rates are just so slidey as well. Such bull crap. It totally hit it. Any minute now. Okay. okay, finally, so hopefully this will finish off. Of course it was one more hit again, that exact same thing happened with Twin Rover. Or whatever, he's dead anyway, that's all that matters. So I'm definitely gonna collect this heart piece. I'm tired of like getting my ass kicked by these bosses. But like I always have said, I've never claimed to be good at video games. But the fact that I died here did make me remember something else that I wanted to show off at the start of the adult section, I guess I just forgot to do it. So that'll give me something to do immediately after this cutscene, which I'm going to edit out because it's pretty long. And yeah, in case you don't know, Impa is the Shadow Sage or whatever. So Impa just gave me the Spirit Medallion, or sorry, the Shadow Medallion. And because I now have Spirit and Shadow, this little cutscene plays. This is a cutscene that normally would play after you get all of the medallions, but... Really, the game only looks for the Spirit and Shadow ones, because it assumes that those will always be the last two that you get. <laughs> They're actually the first two that I got, except for Light, which doesn't really count. So, if I really wanted to, I could actually enter Ganon's castle right now. Because when I go there, like, the, the sages, even the ones that I haven't freed yet, are gonna make the bridge. But before I do that, I actually want to, I guess, get rid of this, because I didn't need it, and get another pole in my bottle, so that if I want to replenish my bomb shoes later, I can do that with RBA, just like I did in the previous vid. So, also, I want to get rid of these stupid boots. Too slippery. I'll just try and manually catch it, see if it works. No, it definitely doesn't work. You have to talk to it. Okay, so something else I do want to show off. I guess I'll see if I can restock my bombs first. That was lucky. Wow, that was... <laughs> that was really lucky. So now I'm fully restocked. Anyway, what I want to show off is all the way back at the market. I'm actually going to go to Ganon's castle. I'm not going to go inside it, but there is something I want to show off in there. And having more bombs means I can super slide there, which is cool. I can stop bonking at the walls. So yeah, there's a point I could just take her, I guess, but Super Slide is a lot more fun, so let's do that instead. Uh, that's not right, is it? No, it's not. I should have done it here first. I'm not really good at this trick today. I don't know. Oh, well, I'm, oh my god, I forgot to pull out my shield to cancel the side roll thing. <laughs> and all this time it could have been just... 
expect her to just walk there. Okay, that will do. Oh no, oh no. Well, thank god the bridge is down as an adult. I was a kid, I'd have to like swim very slowly over to the edge and then climb back up. But anyway, yeah, I'm just gonna avoid the re-deads here. And head up here to what used to be Hiram Castle, but it's now Ganon's Castle. It is actually possible to get in here without the bridge being there, but it's completely useless. Unfortunately, to kill Ganon, or to kill Ganondorf rather, you actually need to have the light arrows. You just can't finish the fight without them. So, even if you do get over there without the bridge being there, unless you have the light arrows, you're stuck. But yeah, if I just walk up here, you'll see that the cutscene should play. Right? Oh, wait a minute, no, I'm silly. I think you also need, anyway, you need the light arrows and the medallions to make it play. Well, whatever, it's, it's not important. The, the thing that I was trying to just emphasize earlier was that the sage cutscene after you get the medallion played. Anyway, what I wanted to get out here is the double defense magic upgrade. It's behind this big rock, and what you're normally supposed to do is lift it up with the golden goblins, which of course you get inside Ganon's castle over there. Link is completely useless with it right now. Like, I'm pressing A and nothing's happening. So I'm going to have to try and find some way around it. Fortunately, there's a really easy solution to this. If you just backflip into this corner and align so that the right side of the B button is touching this cliff, or it is pretty close to it, like this. Maybe a little more to the left. Yeah, like that. And if you do a crouch stab, Link will get... Well, actually, let me show it somewhere else first. If you do a crouch stab, he gets recoil, right? Well, if you put the hover boots on a certain frame during that, then the recoil will go a lot further. Because, I don't know, the hover boots are just cool like that. They like keep your speed for a bit longer. Because they're so slidey and stuff. So, let me just set this up again. I'm going to pause buffer this and look for the right frame. So, one more frame, I think. It's like the second frame that you see sparks on that you're looking for. So I actually, th I think my angle was pretty bad. I'm gonna restart this. Okay, so there's the first spark frame. Any minute now. Here's the second one. So what I wanna do here is equip the hover boots and during the unpause leg, I'm gonna hold R to keep the shield out. I'm not gonna hold Z, but I'm also gonna hold left on the control stick. And he just goes out of bounds and lands straight in the loading zone. So as before, I don't have an ocarina, so I'm just gonna use the fish to do it. Actually, I can also take these boots off. I might pick up the fairy ocarina just at the end of this run, just to show off what that cutscene looks like with Adam Link, because it's kind of silly. But I do want to do as much of the game as I can without one, so... Just gonna pick this up, and this upgrade right here is gonna make it so that it takes basically twice as long for me to die. Every attack that an enemy does will do half as much damage as it currently does. And this is supposed to be like a cool reward upgrade that you get right at the end of the game that you would only ever really use on Ganon, but because I'm glitching the hell out of it, I can just get it really soon and it'll make a lot of the game a lot, a lot easier. A lot of these powers transferred over to Majora's Mask, but they were a lot more difficult to get there because you had to like find all the fairies and dungeons and stuff. And it really didn't seem worth it in that game, but it always seems worth it to get them here because they're so easy. But yeah, I'm pretty much safe from any kind of damage from the rest of the game now. So yeah, if I just exit this place... I should be safe. I shouldn't get stuck in the rock or anything like that. Although, yeah, okay. If you exit that place slowly, Link will walk out really slow like that, and then he'll stop. And he'll still be inside the rock, but you can just walk out it anyway. But yeah, that was all I wanted to show off, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.